Taylor. Actually, for the last few weeks, is uh, our next featured reader. So, Carlos C.F. Barón is a 20 something year old American of Mexican descent with an altruism streak and a flair for the sarcastic. An award winning essayist and orator, he is currently working towards his third degree but first BA while moonlighting as a word warrior and taking slow, steady steps toward his dream of having people quote him in their Facebook statuses. <laughs> It should be noted that this dream does not interfere with his other dream, getting struck by lightning and developing electrokinesis, which is what? Uh, it's controlling lightning. Or just... Controlling lightning, which would be freaking sweet. Um, when Seev is not busy fighting off cycloptic ninja pandas or loafing, he's usually crying in front of a blank computer screen or chronicling the events of his D&D campaign. His website, book, career, and resume are currently works in progress. <laughs> Carlos the strawberries, I take it upon myself to go out and buy some more. I step outside and decide to walk, leaving the dusty white explorer in its spot by the tree. It's a nice night, and I had a really strong Long Island earlier, so driving doesn't seem like a good idea. I feel sober, but don't want to risk it. I'm four years old. He just broke a piece of crystal and asked me not to tell anyone while he ran to get the vacuum. I'm upset at him for something he did earlier and run and tell anyway. More than 17 years later, I still feel a pang of guilt for breaking his trust. I love the moments we can genuinely call twilight, the small cracks of vanilla in the sky as the stars let us know they're ready to play. I lose myself in the clouds, taking advantage of how quiet the trees at this hour. I just started first grade. He's already taught me long division and explained the concept of the variables. Every time I solve a big problem he makes for me, he drags me in front of mom to show off what I just did. Fractions and decimals trip me up. They will always trip me up. But every time I solve something, or draw something, or write something, he drags me in front of mom to brag about me. Mira lo que hizo tu hijo, he always says. I sidestep a jogger and step into the bike lane so a cozy looking couple can stay cozy. We're at the arcade. I'm too young to have any money of my own and too short to comfortably reach the controls, but I've always loved watching him play. I don't understand how he can be so good at everything. He asked me to choose a character for him, uh, Blackheart. How about Iron? Well, I want to see Blackheart. He sighs, chooses Blackheart, and only gets the fifth round. That was his last pair of quarters. We go home. I won't realize the tiny sacrifice he made for me until years later. Iron Man is a killer special in that game. The air is gelid. Well, as gelid as can be for, for fall in California. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. I can't breathe. I'm wheezing and puffing, and I swear I'm doing all the things I normally do to breathe, but it feels like I'm suffocating. I'm pretty sure that I'm about to die. Oxygen finally fills my lungs, and he's worried. Explains he must have knocked the wind out of me. I don't know what that means, but I hope it never happens to me again. He makes sure it doesn't. I think about it, and I'm glad I didn't hit my head when he quite literally kicked me across the room. Even with the pads, our sparring sessions can get kind of rough. I will forever remember the drills he made me and my little brother practice. Jab, jab, cross, low left hook, high left hook, low right hook. High right hook, left uppercut, right uppercut, front kick, roundhouse, inside crescent. I'll use what he taught me one time and one time only. When the football players try to throw their weight around. Now, is there really much of a difference between organic strawberries and regular? We're in my dad's hometown of Guanajuato, Mexico. It's been warm all week, but it decides it's going to rain today. We spar, barefoot on the concrete. In the rain. 
The rules are simple. Take turns stringing together simple combinations of three. Two of one strike and one of another. It's pouring, and the rain is warmer than expected, but I never feel cooler. The session ends. I wonder if it was ever any sort of competition with him, or if it was just about the time spent together. I'm not sure if he ever sandbagged around me, or purposely went all out to give me something to work towards. I've lost to him at just about everything for the entirety of my life. It never stopped me from trying, though. Usually. I pay for regular strawberries and head back home. It really is a good night for a walk. This is about an older brother who I don't get to see as much as I like. Uh, this next piece is from a much larger, much larger piece that uh, I'm still working on, and I think it's hilarious. So. Here we go. <clears throat> Nick wanted to stop at the pharmacy before we went over to Amanda's and set up the after after party. He said it would be a good idea to pick up some cheap liquor, chips, and whatever other crap he felt he needed. He pulled up to the CVS, parked. And he and I made our way in. Our two volunteers, Sean and Blanca, said they'd hang out in the car while we shopped. I got the feeling they really wanted the privacy as I stepped out of the car and stepped through the sliding doors. There was a surprising amount of people inside, considering how late it was, and there didn't seem to be a lot of people on shift, so the line would be getting really long really soon. With this in mind, I zipped past an overweight man in sweats who was stocking up on muscle milk and sped down the nearest aisle. Zipped here, zip there. My eyes scanned up and down the store, but weren't locating what I needed. I thought the urge to do the sensible thing and just ask someone who worked there for help, opting to walk the central lane and briefly skim the signs. None of them provided any sort of clue as to where I would find my needle in this haystack. Where the hell do they keep these things? I muttered to myself. Finally, I stormed down the right aisle and found what I was looking for. Condoms. When I think about it, there was absolutely no good reason for me to be going through with this. It wasn't like I thought that night was a sure thing. It wasn't like I got any real signals or obvious signs from Amanda. And it definitely wasn't like I was the kind of guy to have a one night stand. But for some reason, I felt it might be a good idea to be packing. I figured if nothing came of it, at least I'd be ready some other time, or maybe I could do people a solid and give them out. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple in the aisle, so I just kept walking, hoping they thought I was just passing through. I pretended to be looking at the nearby allergy medication underneath the pharmacy window until she decided on what brand of tampons to buy, and the two of them left. Way to be mature about it, I know. I slowly crept back into the lane, and then got slammed by a horrifying revelation. At least one third of the aisle was dedicated to the little latex bastards, and I was completely overwhelmed and embarrassed to even be standing near the wall of rubbers. Here was the problem. I had never in my life bought a box of condoms before. I mean, up until this point, I didn't even know there were different kinds of condoms within each individual brand. I didn't know there was apparently a brand for every individual penis in the known universe. I recognized maybe two of the names stocked up on the shelf and decided to just stick with what at least sounded familiar. There were still a ton of options, though. And I couldn't decide what would be best for me. I was in the middle of awkwardly grabbing a box of Trojans when an attractive brunette in her late 20s, maybe early 30s, walked down the aisle. Brown met Hazel when her eyes spontaneously connected. I quickly looked back down at the box and pretended my eyes were fixed to the text written on the back. Cool. Go for Buddha. Play cool. She casually strolled up to me and began examining the pregnancy tests. She leaned over to grab an EPT, her yoga pants doing me a favor. I shoved the box back where I got it and briefly wondered if I should perhaps grab the box of Magnums to try and impress, but <laughs> decided that was a horrible idea. I grabbed another box of Trojans and started reading the back awkwardly. I looked over at the QP net. Uh, cute brunette. Just as she looked over at me, Hazel met Brown again as we caught each other's eyes for the second time. So there I was, standing in front of a wall of condoms, smiling awkwardly at an attractive older woman, 
holding a box of spermicidal trojans, desperately trying not to say anything stupid, like, hi. Hi. I have squeaked. <laughs> hi. She smiled. We looked at what the other was buying, and I got the feeling that there was some sort of poetic or cosmic meaning behind this, but ignored it on account of the awkward tightness spreading through my chestal region, and decided to just purchase the box I was holding. Smoothly stepping around the straight-haired, pink tank top wearing, yoga class taking vanilla scented brunette, I headed for the cashier. Somehow, I managed to still beat the oncoming rush of customers. But Nick was nowhere in sight. Wanting to avoid him giving me any shit, I figured it would be a good idea to just go ahead and buy the damn things. But I wasn't sure if I should buy them alone, or get a soda or something to make it less obvious or even just less uncomfortable. I didn't want anyone to think of me as the kind of guy who buys energy drinks with his condoms, though, either. <laughs> I'm a grown-ass man, damn it, I thought. <laughs> if I want to buy a box of condoms, I should be able to buy a box of condoms and not be given any shit by anyone. Having just charged myself up, I marched right on up to the cash register and firmly put the box on the counter, face down. It was at this point that I realized the cashier was a portly elderly woman with white Santa Claus hair and large gold horn-rimmed glasses. It should be noted that Catholic guilt is a bitch. One look at this old lady who happened to be wearing a cross around her neck, and I was wondering what my family would say if they saw me buying a box of condoms before heading out to a party late on a Friday night. They probably wouldn't have cared, to be honest, but I kept feeling they probably wouldn't have been too happy with me either. The old lady, who was reminding me more and more of my grandma, grabbed the box, and I assumed a neutral expression. Abuelita Claus took one look at the box, one look at me, and then proceeded to scan the source of my current shame. She scanned them once, twice, thrice, and nothing happened. The laser was refusing to read the barcode, and a line was already forming. The universe was conspiring against me, throwing up every imaginable roadblock to prevent me from purchasing this one miserable box of condoms, and all I could do was stand there and maintain as neutral an expression as possible. I thought, well, maybe I can make this seem a little more natural if I just casually buy some chapstick or something. I looked down at the little plastic jar of the available brand on sale and noticed that it was vitamin water flavored chapstick. But <laughs> not just any vitamin water flavor. Triple X flavored, <laughs> which is actually just pomegranate, blueberry, and acai, but still seemed hilariously inappropriate at the moment. Oh, she'll definitely think I'm perverted if I buy that. <laughs> then it happened. I need a price check on a box of Trojan ENZ condoms, <laughs> rang the store-wide intercom. <laughs> now, I am positive there were women standing behind me in line, and I am positive each of them was thinking of me as a sleaze. I wanted to turn around and say, no, you don't understand, it's been kind of a weird day for me. This doesn't normally happen. I'm, <laughs> I'm really a decent guy. It normally takes four dates to even kiss a girl, I swear. I'm, I'm only buying these because it never hurts to carry them. Honest, it, it, it's like this lighter I only carry around because strange smokers ask me for a light all the time. You never know, right? <laughs> I smiled and laughed to myself a bit, doing my best to ignore the several pairs of judgmental eyes I could swear were drilling into my spinal cord and shoulder blades. I placed a 10 on the counter, grabbed the box, and walked off. Please. Keep the change, I said, power walking towards the automatic doors. Eileen was waiting for me as I stepped out. Why didn't I just have you get them for me again? She laughed. You know I can't handle that sort of thing. We waited by the door for Nick before heading back to his car. He finally showed up, being partially followed by an Asian girl, who I eventually recognized as the waitress he had been hitting on earlier that night. There were some scattered introductions for a bit until he finally loaded two heavy-looking bags into the car. We got back into the car, ignoring how warm it was inside, and looked up Amanda's address in the GPS. I had just forgotten about my humiliating experience when Nick opened his mouth. Condoms, huh? Just drive, douchebag. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a fun night. <laughs> 
am I doing on time? Am I okay? I think I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> um, I think I have something really short here. From the same, it's from the same piece, just different part of it. It's always <clears throat> my alarm ring. Time to get up. I rolled, read, fell out of bed, bringing the paper bag color sheets with me. The word crabby seemed to capture the scene pretty well. I dreamt of dragons and psychic superpowers, and after such an incredible dream, the day could really only go downhill. Desperately, my mind reached out tried to shut off the siren of my alarm by asking it to stop ringing, begging it to stop ringing, imagining it shutting off. But that seemed to only make it beep faster and louder and at higher frequencies. So I made my way through the piles of clothes and shoes and books to put the clock out of my misery, silently cursing the friend whose mom had given it to me as a going away present. Six in the AM was too early to be alive. Especially if all you had going on was school, school, and more school. I thought, you can do this, Spidey. You can do this. The sun's not even out yet. To compensate for the ball shriveling cold, I sit around in the shower for an extra five or ten minutes. If any of my housemates woke up as obscenely early as I did on Fridays, I might have pissed some people off. But seeing as how I was alone in my early morning exploits, I didn't have to deal with any obnoxious bitching and moaning about how long of a shower I took, and how the heat left the room steamy, or how my shower somehow ruined their laundry. Yes, the last one had happened. Seriously. 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 But as much as I hated my housemates, I hated mornings more, and this one was already a pain in my ass. So with the excitement of a kid about to eat their vegetables, I started digging through the heap of clothes to find something clean and relatively decent to wear, secretly enjoying the odd sensation of freedom that comes from being completely naked behind a locked door. It took a bit, but I eventually got dressed <clears throat> and ready for school, having opted to wear a plain green t-shirt, jeans, and a black jacket I had somehow acquired. With books, bus pass, and pessimism in tow, I headed out the side of the entrance of the house and slowly strolled down the parking lot to meet my escort. As usual, I was late. I always leave you guys there. <laughs>